Welcome to a very special Nerds and Friends Deep Dive. Before we get into our main story tonight, I guess it's not a story, more of a discussion, but we're going to be talking about something that Will told me recently that blew my mind. Um, and so before we dive into that, though, I got to give a shout out to our friend Roy, who we all met in Phoenix recently. Uh, Roy from the Nerdles in Time uh, channel on YouTube, at Nerdles in Time, had a question for the nerds of Nerds and Friends. Roy posted on one of our videos... Um, um, talking about the Final Fantasy VI game and how it could be adapted into a movie or TV show. But he was wondering, what are the nerds and friends' thoughts on the 90s live-action Super Mario Brothers movie? I, because I have not seen it, so I figured I would pass that along to Will and Carrie. Joshua. <laughs> I've Joshua. I've seen it. <laughs> Joshua Tiberius Lindquist, how dare you <laughs> tell me that you haven't seen the 1990s it oh is, my goodness oh my it is a I, i'm putting the podcast again i haven't been on here in months i'm quitting again <laughs> like i'm over it like no i i've never seen is that the one john leguizamo's in it right john leguizamo is luigi bob hoskins <laughs> is mario why i i think i've seen still images from it and i've i mean uh, been intrigued but also vaguely disturbed so <laughs> dennis hopper is Who's Bowser, he? and he is doing a Donald Trump impression the whole time. <laughs> He's supposed to be an evolved T Rex, so he walks around like this the whole time. It is so god awful. So, is it like, like the room caliber of a movie, or like what kind of experience are we talking about here? No, it does have more plot. Um, okay. Uh, well, if I can go first here, by all um, means, I, I, I had, don't want to interrupt. I adore how dumb this movie is. <laughs> like, this is a movie that, for all intents and purposes, um, that I, I I'm going to be honest. I'll bet if like they had had a solid script, this movie could have been either really good or just just absolutely terrible. But do you all remember the 1990 Ninja Turtles movie, the one with like the Jim Henson suits? I never watched I uh, Ninja Turtles uh, animated or otherwise growing up. So the, the the live action one is really good. I also uh, also Josh um, remind me to, to to hit you next time that we're <laughs> okay. in the same in the same room. Yes, uh, just like just like really like uh, to, really fucking hard. Uh, but <laughs> you started the podcast and named it Nerds and Friends. There mm -hmm. are so many things to be a nerd about. I'm sorry, I don't have cards for all of them. <laughs> sure. But that, Sorry, that is, I, uh... I, I I will I will turn over a nerd card to the authorities. Uh, hopefully, Thomas Jane um, and uh, Clifton Curtis uh, Clifton Collins will show up and appear in the hotel oh, room and go. take uh, take a nerd card from me. So, <laughs> Josh actually got his nerd card from being a real nerd for the uh, the Drac or sorry the, the I said Dracula the uh, the Garfield comic strip uh, entirely the Garfield comic strip. Um, I, I've barely read those either <laughs> I, I i did it. well you, you haven't missed much if you drank water you have uh experienced the comedy of of uh the garfield comic strip there you go that's about <laughs> that's about the, that's about as entertaining you hate mondays do you like lasagna um, uh, it depends on what anyway. i'm doing that monday <laughs> okay so sorry i um i've adhd'd us away from the conversation okay the 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 1990 the 1990 super mario brothers movie uh again bob hoskins is playing mario Mario, because their last name is Mario, for an inex inexplicable an inexplicable reason. So his character's name uh, is Mario Mario. They they are Mario Mario, and John, Legu John Leguizamo is Luigi Mario. Yeah. Yes, and... if anybody is familiar with the the game theorists, we have uh, it's already been described and uh, explained years ago. Uh, Mario's canonical name is Mario Jumpman Mario. I missed that playing Super Mario Brothers a little bit when I was a kid. Just, just, just a little <laughs> bit, but it's it. This That's is delightful, a canon. Is, I love it. I mean, I mean, to be entirely honest, like it, I don't totally hate the movie, as as like awful as it is in so many ways, because you could tell that they were trying to do what Batman had done, like the Tim Burton Batman, oh. but. With like, cause, cause apparently the directors were a husband and wife team, and they're like, they were like punk rockers, and they wanted to make a punk version of like the Mario story. Uh huh. 
but they just kept changing it. Interesting. And um, I I don't even know where I don't even know where to start. Like uh, like the entire premise, like the Mushroom Kingdom, is just an alternate universe where dinosaurs evolved into people instead of so, apes. So they went and kind of really, sci-fi with it. <laughs> this is a spinoff really of everything, everywhere, that. all at once. Where instead of the sausage fingers, it's the dinosaur I, people. <laughs> I I would I would kill to see that cameo now, like that to like just be in the background. But yeah, it, it is exactly like that. They live in Dino Hat because because that's their pun versus off Manhattan. And Dino Hatton. Dino Hatton, and that's everything amazing. else about it is just like take everything you know about a Mario movie, um, which is and, zero because uh, I've never seen a a Nintendo themed movie. Well, I, I mean, take everything you know about Mario just in general. Okay. Um, which is basically that he's Italian and a plumber. That is the entirety of what these directors knew about the story, and then they just ran with that and came up with like the most insane shit. Uh, Will, I, I want to hand it over to Will because I'm sure that <laughs> Will has a great like way to encapsulate how bonkers this movie is. Uh, so my description of it is uh, take everything that you know about Mario and throw it away because you don't need any of that nonsense. <laughs> and, and, get, then, and then get wildly drunk. Get as drunk as Bob Hoskins oh, did no, every day on no. set. How much oh, and he admitted it. I, I disagree. I don't think you should watch that movie in any type of altered mind state because I don't think you can handle it. <laughs> So the first time I ever try LSD, which has not happened yet, I should do it while watching this movie in a room I'm I, not familiar with with you flashing lights around might me. Die. <laughs> I I will I will pay. I will pay to see that. I will pay for the live stream. A nerds and friends 100%. exclusive. Josh tried the LSD for the first time. <laughs> yes. Bizarrely, I'm the angel on your shoulder in this situation. <laughs> You're like, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's not worth it. No, the, the, like it is alternate it John is, Malkovich from Red, <laughs> just yeah. living in a bunker. I am <laughs> the mushroom people are coming. <laughs> I am the I am I am I am the non-binary devil on your shoulder. Like I will absolutely tell yeah. you the worst thing that you could possibly do. No, it is like <laughs> it is an absolutely bizarre. Like I don't know who thought this was a good idea at any point. <laughs> Not Nintendo. <laughs> Not Nintendo after apparently the first week, because I think they might have just been like, nope. Like, have they made any adaptations since that movie up until the very recent Mario Brothers animated movie? There no, was a Mario was, Brothers was cartoon. Really was that before or after? Okay, so that was... I'm actually not sure if that was before or after, but what I do know is that the cartoon... Because that was... That had to be in the late 80s, early 90s. I want to say it was the 80s because it was whenever Moonlighting, the show mm -hmm. with, with Bruce Willis was huge because I basically they was a movie, led... not a show? No, Moonlighting was a series back when Bruce oh. Willis was a comedy actor. But like, but basically oh. like the, the Legend of Zelda cartoon is basically a ripoff of Moonlighting. There's like, a that's Legend of Zelda stick. cartoon? There was a Legend <laughs> of Zelda cartoon. How did well, I not know about this? Excuse me, princess. Excuse me, princess. Uh, Since oh, when God, has there been a like... Legend of Zelda cartoon? Josh, you, um, wow, he, I don't know. I, I I was thinking we were going to like jog some like repressed memory with that that line, but he, there was no recognition on his face. No, I'm I'm almost like I I think I think Josh is like Josh at this point. I think we've like like woken him up out of like a cryogenesis in in like Cheyenne oh. Mountain. Like what? Where is it? Like, <laughs> Where is it? but yeah, no. The, I've like, been inside Cheyenne insanity. Mountain about a dozen times. Not for the army, weird story, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe I never left. It was actually for the orgies. Um... <laughs> it was actually for Subway, which is the lamest possible answer, but <laughs> that got Carrie. <laughs> I killed him. Oh, oh God. <laughs> it was actually for Subway. <laughs> It was. They 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 replaced the uh the little diner in uh in the NORAD station with the subway and the only subway corporate employee with a secret a top secret security clearance was this guy. So I got to go oh. in and open a subway there. <laughs> so you won uh, by default. Uh, 
Yeah, so then I would, I would confuse I would confuse all the soldiers coming through line because we had to have like a security badge and it lists your security clearance level. And they'd look at me and I've got like a button up shirt with the subway logo and they look at my clearance and they're like, how's yours higher than mine? Because I was still in the reserves and I was like, don't worry about it. What kind of cheese you want on this sandwich? You know, like <laughs> not, 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 ask not questions. Josh, not Josh working at a NORAD subway subway and serving a reptilian out of his skin suit. <laughs> A a, yes, a tuna accurate. sub like like yes yes I wish for the sub that is not actually tuna but it will tell people is tuna because <laughs> I desire pain like <laughs> like how we went for the same joke I was gonna say I just want to see like uh the soldier who's just sitting there in line and then just looks at your security clearance and what is in the tuna <laughs> I can't tell you that soldier <laughs> oh my god. My favorite story, well, I have a couple stories that I can't tell on the podcast uh, about NORAD, but um, there was one that was very funny. Um, they let me, because, you know, you know how it is on a secure installation where you go from the entrance point to where you're supposed to go and nowhere else or else you get in a lot of trouble. So anyway, one time, though, they gave me like they were doing a tour, but it wasn't one of the public tours they do for NORAD. It was like the new like Northcom general coming in and they knew I had my TS still. So they were like, you can come do the full tour, like the full tour. And I was like, okay, cool. So I did. And um, uh, this part I could talk about, we were in that big control room that you've seen depicted in movies where they have all the screens and they're tracking all kinds of stuff. Um, and for the people who work long hours in there, they have simulated windows which are just big screens with cameras on top of the mountain looking down at colorado springs and the surrounding landscape um and to give kind of a, a window-esque perspective those lenses are a little bit magnified i didn't realize that when i was looking at them i was like oh that's a really cool view suddenly i see a giant like insectoid monster walking over the city and i was like ah and then i realized it was a wasp on the camera lens but it's kind of magnified so it looked like this gargantuan insectoid beast devouring colorado springs and they were like that happens once in a while during the summer so i was like okay so <laughs> but there, I, I like audibly gasped because i was just looking at the city and suddenly you know wasp head <laughs> Just, ah, the Godzilla movies. They were true. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, Carrie, you're muted. <laughs> Honestly, that's about the effect of, uh, of of watching that Mario Brothers movie. That Super Mario okay. Brothers movie. Yeah, honestly. It is, it, that's yeah, high price. <laughs> same, same vibe there. Mm -hmm. For sure. It, it, it is worth a watch. It is, it is, it is absolutely worth a watch. Yeah. It is on, like on whatever you can find it on. Yeah, it is so much but, better and so much worse than you could possibly imagine. And you can tell yeah. that uh, it looks like they put so much work and none, uh, none whatsoever into it. Oh, that's amazing. That's same time. Lance Henriksen is in it. And I'm not going to tell you at what point, but Lance Henriksen is fucking in this movie. That's amazing. <laughs> It's, See, I, it's, I think when a movie is lazy and like doesn't care about its own existence, it alienates the audience. But when a movie really deeply cares and just misses the mark, that can be deeply entertaining. I, I see what you mean. So yeah, no, I, 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 I think you you should watch it just for the experience of it. I I'm gonna have to now. Well, thank you, Roy, from Nerdles in Time for an excellent question. That was delightful. Absolutely. Thank you, Roy. That's a great way to kick off the conversation and honestly also, learn to go to, a lot about each to other. To go to Roy's <laughs> first point, uh, we do not need a Final Fantasy VI show. We need a Final Fantasy IX show. In, in the comment that Roy left on our video... He said, I've always wished someone would make a Final Fantasy VI miniseries great rich story. So to to Rory's mm -hmm. point, you're saying Final Fantasy IX would be a better candidate? I've never Absolutely. played any Final Fantasy games, so uh, why why is that the case? Because Final Fantasy IX is the best Final Fantasy game, period. Fight me. Roy, let us know if you wish to fight Will in the comments, and we will keep turn to keep to keep you all tuned on a Nerdles and Fight versus Nerds and Friends battle royale over Final Fantasy. So uh, that would be that would be pretty solid. Mm -hmm. um, I will also say that uh, since most of the properties are either owned or could be owned by Disney, a uh, I'll bet you we're probably two years away from a Kingdom Hearts series being an actual thing. So that that we'll is see how that uh, goes. 
other people on the this is in the video mm -hmm. that uh, me and Caleb did about video game adaptations and Mass Effect. Um, and we did get people talking about mm -hmm. that as well. Um, I've never played Kingdom Hearts, but some people are excited. Some people don't want them to do um, to attempt an adaptation of that. I I, I don't even want to see that. I no no. For all of you Kingdom Hearts fans, you're wrong. You're Final wrong. Fantasy is better than Kingdom Hearts. Are those two games similar in terms of gameplay? No. They're from the same they're, studio. Yeah, they're they're both uh I've Square never played Enix either. And and yeah, they have some overlap in characters sometimes, depending on oh, they, oh, interesting. On okay, the, the exact lore, and uh, apparently really? there is a uh, yeah, allegedly there is a story to Kingdom Hearts. Oh, <laughs> uh, allegedly, this isn't that one just like crossover mania with Disney characters. That's essentially. I the mean, plot. yes, that was my mm -hmm. understanding, but I can see now since that there's apparently a legend of zelda cartoon i've never heard about that i'm questioning everything i thought i understood so yeah i i i i think i think josh all you got to do is wait for whenever um nintendo decides to cash in and make a a legend of zelda movie adaptation through um, i've seen april fool's jokes so. of that but they're not doing that anytime soon that i've heard maybe we'll see Honestly, I'm amazed they well, haven't, because that would be like as big as uh, Lord of the Rings has been, and um, like Rings of Power did great, Game of Thrones did. Uh, Rings did great. of Power didn't do excellent in terms of uh, revenue generation or views oh. for Amazon, from what I've read. But I think really? they overspent. I. I don't want to turn this into a Rings of Power episode. I have opinions on that show. I think it could have been good, and I think some of the writing they dropped the ball, whereas everything else in the show was immaculate, like the performances, the costume design, the special effects, the music, cinematography, the stunt work was really incredible. Um, I felt like the writing wasn't excellent, and it was weird because they had a lot of talented, established writers on it, so I don't know what happened. But that's... Um, while I'm questioning my nerddom, I think that's a great segue and questioning everything I know into our main deep dive tonight of um, the, the big reveal, if I may be the one to lay it out, was that when we were hanging out in Phoenix, I believe it was Will who initially said it, that ha Hasbro owns Ouija boards as like intellectual property? Yes. Uh, you I have are... a million questions about that. Uh you are absolutely correct. The uh, well-known, uh, any board that you see that is actually a legitimate labeled uh, Ouija board, uh, O-U-I-J-A, that trademark, that branding is owned by Hasbro, the toy company. They bought it from, I think it was Parker Brothers before Hasbro had it. Let me know Probably. when I can start vomiting out the multitude of questions I have about this towards you. Oh, <laughs> go oh, right yeah, ahead. By, by all means, yeah, by all means, you can. I mean, I mean, the first one that jumps to mind is why is not everyone talking about this all the time? Why have I not, until my thirty-third year of existence, heard of this? That's my first one, and I have well, more. Considering that you didn't know that there was a, uh, 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 well. No, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Go There's not the a Legend of Zelda cartoon. Are you two trolling me? What is <laughs> the, happening? The fact that you haven't seen the 1990s like live action Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles alone is I enough. I was busy an being a repressed homeschooled Christian child in the 90s. There's a lot of things I missed. <laughs> I've never. I think seen you've explained a lot of why you seen, don't know a I've lot never about seen Power Ninja. Rangers. Yeah, I, I, I think you may have just answered your question. I watched Bible question. Man as a child. Mm -hmm. I didn't watch all these heathen shows y'all are talking about. Oh, I'm <laughs> I'm so sorry for your loss. It's okay. It, it gives me some laughs in between the tears as an adult, so. <laughs> <laughs> you need right. to come at everything with fresh eyes. Hey, you know yeah, what? We, On special we, occasions, so. we watch Veggie Tales, so I had something of a childhood, okay? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh. I'm still like I I still groan inside every time so, somebody tries to tell me no Veggie Tales is actually well animated. No, no it's, it's garbage. Not. No, it's not. You're All just looking garbage. through nostalgia. 
all that well Gita's i was gonna say i was, I was about to say all propaganda and the children terrible. and indoctrination is garbage but then i was like well gi joe is like pro-america uh propaganda so it's just this just the non-christian stuff is better <laughs> i <laughs> i believe we all have opinions here but to, well, that, that, to that keep is a... this tangent from from going true. taking us all the way off the uh, that's true off the rails that uh, that is good but but it does segue to my next question though which is mm -hmm. hasbro is a very well established toy company yes. um if correct me if i'm wrong i believe they have transformers gi joe lots of other recognizable toy brands uh mm -hmm. on their roster why would they risk alienating so many of the hypersensitive um satanic panic christians in this country by owning the ouija board um uh, name and marketing like why why would they do that and slash how have they kept it so under wraps and not had it impact their branding i, well, I, I think it's easy mm -hmm. because they they don't like like they, they they truly don't care like they 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 truly do not care they're hasbro they they like everything else have like just aggregated so much in terms of uh uh, uh games and properties that they this is something that they can make money off of like like this this isn't a big dollar, okay? This is the right. this is the teenage goth demographic <laughs> that is both aware of and still purchasing these. If they are not getting ones off of Etsy for several hundred dollars that are like burned in the light of the full moon by <laughs> a witch <laughs> in Salem, Massachusetts, like like that's which I mean, if you're gonna Ouija, you got to do it that way. Stop you know? reading my diary. <laughs> yeah right and yeah, yeah will's just over here like putting away the wood burning kit um <laughs> but uh but like it's entirely something that they have owned for a very long time they've just like a kind of mm -hmm. uh, that they've just acquired and i think the only like real indicator is that the ouija and ouija origin of evil movies did mm -hmm. have the hasbro logo on them they did which, <laughs> Interestingly yes. enough, for me, puts them in the same weird extended universe as the the absolutely awful Battleship movie and Transformers. Oh, that oh, so yeah. that's Weren't the crossover. Making... That's the Avengers movie we need. God damn it! <laughs> and I think there also weren't. Wasn't there like a Candyland movie that was in production like a while ago, starring Kevin Spacey? Like no, production hell. Like yeah, yeah, right. You, you, you that was a bad joke. Guys. <laughs> I feel bad for that one. <laughs> like they're well, they they finally learned that there's a lot of like properties and games that like Hasbro yeah. can just really like turn into something if they like have the right script. Which is like that whole like I think they learned the wrong lesson from the Barbie movie, which right. is oh we should just churn out what the fuck ever we can, yeah. as opposed to like like. There were a lot of people working on the on the Barbie movie for a long time before yes. it got to um, Margot Robbie uh, and her production Patty team Jenkins. acquired it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Apparently, oh, yeah, Patty Jenkins Cody had it before uh, before Margot Robbie and before Greta Gerwig got it. Or was, Greta Gerwig, it was yeah, yeah. It was I think Patty even Jenkins, a... and I think Diablo Diablo Cody was writing it. Okay. Yeah, I I know it went through a lot of iterations, but I I think you hit the nail on the head, Carrie, when you said that. Mattel is now like, let's do a shared toy universe. And it's like, no mm -hmm. one wants that. Barbie succeeded right. because it was its own thing and it didn't try to be anything it wasn't. And um, it wasn't afraid to take a stand on certain things while still being massively appealing and entertaining to so many people. It was just an incredibly well curated creative project. And I highly doubt they're going to be able to just mimic that for other toy lines. Like they're doing a Barbie movie with Daniel Kaluuya. And I was like, is it like, a sad look at someone who plays Barbie and it's like a really dark drama. And they're like, no, it's a straight up Barbie movie. And I'm like, why? How I I'm doubtful. That's going to be good. I mean, the more good movies we get, the better. I'd love if it was great, yeah. but I doubt it. Ideally every movie would be good and would be right. entertaining and would be artistic and move the, uh, I know people who very... need to hate stuff and they wouldn't like that. They'd be like, I don't want all these movies to be good. I need to be able to, lambast something for making myself feel like a person <laughs> well that's see that's the look, thing look, is look, you as can... long as daniel like like you're talking about the guy who voiced spider punk as long as he's talking in his cockney accent and slang i'd listen to that man talk about whatever the fuck he wanted to talk about 
I like, doubt he's going to use his awesome actual voice for Barney, though. If so, that could save the movie. You're absolutely right. That could it, save it, the movie. Could, that could save the movie. I'm definitely, um, <laughs> I'm definitely uh, um, uh, into that. Yeah. But uh, so, oh, his right, voiceover for Spider Punk was amazing. That was so cool. Oh, so good. I love that. I, I, I love that character. So here, so Josh, what, what other questions about the, the, uh, the, the Ouija board in general do you have? Because I think between me and Will. Like we mm-hmm. could give you the basic rundown, you know. I'd love like, that yeah, because I'm sure there's popular. gaps in my knowledge. Um, I really know what I've seen in movies, and that's about it. And there hasn't been too many of those, so I would love. Mm-hmm. Let's make this educational. Mm-hmm. Tell me all a right. lot. How you, you say that, but but Ouija boards are such a staple of horror cinema now. Like they're even a staple like like they're they're even mentioned in the exorcist back in the 70s like the like the possession of a ouija board or using a ouija board is such a like it's a horror trope and it's a horror trope for a reason it's because people were genuinely scared of these Uh uh and and it was it was a huge backlash but because because before they were really like associated with like calling the wrong spirit or satanism or anything like that um, back in the late 1800s, spiritualism was hugely popular mm-hmm. and seen as a a very like it was it was a very Christian pastime. Like that's where seances uh-huh. come from. Really, yeah, the, the, what, what 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 seances mm-hmm. in the uh, in the like the the more American sense. And it took off, and it kept. Yeah, and it, I mean, it's one of those things that was a very uniquely American like uh, uh, evolution of of what spiritualism movement was over in Europe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because sports you, came in, and yeah, so like around oh, uh, what was this late eighteen hundreds, early nineteen hundreds? You even had um, oh, what's their name? The uh, the the Fox sisters, um, who would have these big like, uh, oh, oh, what did, were they call them? Table table turning. I forgot what their 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 big trick was. Um, where like they would have dozens of people in them taking part in these uh uh events where you would hear knocking and there would be all kinds of of different things going on. And then well, they did uh, they did stage shows. Like that that was mm-hmm. that was one of the big things. Like they they did they did them like in their house, they did stage shows, you know, and it's it's very much uh like it's very much a mentalism act in a lot of ways, which is what made, mm-hmm. which is one of the things that made them very, really cool. But they what, were. What is a mentalism act? Um, did you see? Did you see Nightmare Alley? No, I don't know what that is. So a mental. Oh wait, you know that you, you saw. Now you see me, right? No, I don't. I haven't seen that. Damn, damn, Josh, have you seen it's, movies? You work in film, right? Okay, so a <laughs> mentalism. Just trying uh, to see them all. A, <laughs> that's okay. A, a mentalism act is essentially. Um, uh, you're paying attention to whatever information people have on their person, you know, what clothing they wear, they wear, how they wear their jewelry, a lot of generalities. And basically what you do is you, um, you kind of cold read your way. It, it works really well in a crowd. You yeah. cold read your way into somebody volunteering some information, and then you use that to build and zero in on things that make it seem like you can either read their mind, you can read the future, but what you're actually doing is a little bit more what Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, actually, oddly enough, an avid spiritualist, um, mm-hmm. kind of describes as Sherlock Holmes's methodology. Like, oh. it seems like magic, but what it really is, is um, uh, you're, you're paying attention to all the little details. Uh, oh. Nightmare Alley does a really good job of this with uh, with the main character being a mentalist. Um, uh, it's He's played by Bradley Cooper. But... Um, oh. Essentially, the thing about mentalism is the same thing that you would get if you go to a if you went to a freak show back in the day and you see a psychic. You know, there's certain okay. things like there's there's seating the audience, there's people filling out pamphlets, there's uh, there's usually an assistant. It's it's kind it's kind of a sleight of hand trick to make people think that um, that the person is speaking to spirits. And okay. that's the thing about the the way that like the Fox sisters acts worked in like a really basic way. Um, but there's also the very, very much the strain of thought the, or the um, the the train of thought that uh, this was actually them tapping into spiritual energy, energy in some mm-hmm. way. And the cool thing about it is um, actually like uh, I 
I can't remember which of the Ouija movies it was because they came out like two years apart. But yeah. one of them actually, like the beginning starts out like the mom is a psychic, like oh. as in she she's a psychic for business and she gets the Ouija board to add to the act. But she does a whole bunch of bits like uh, like like she she's got all these like little rigs and gadgets that she's like working with her legs under the table to look like supernatural phenomena in the moment that kind of draws people more and more into the the spiritualism act yeah. and that's what uh like that's mm -hmm. what mentalism does it's very much reading a person and finding a person who is willing enough to believe that you can build and build and build off of that until like now that's mm -hmm. if you're doing it cold right there is something uh oh actually a word that i reminded is a word recently um so uh there is something to ouija, ouija boards being an egregore now what where they are something egregor is like a, is is a, it's it's kind of like a tulpa it's like a thought form it's something that enough people believe mm -hmm. in and believe in ardently enough that it's become more real there uh -huh. is definitely something to the uh the spirit board or the ouija board now being used in more esoteric and occult magical um uh rituals that it has really taken on kind of a life of its own in being a uh like a, a, a staple of certain occult um cult practices uh yeah. with people so to kind of hop back before we get into that tangent um i realized that not everybody is going to be uh familiar with spiritualism the the movement so just kind of a very basic uh introduction um that's just gonna kind of scratch the surface enough for the conversation when we're talking about the spiritualism um we're in at least in this conversation we're referring to the the movement in the late 1800s early 1900s it actually goes back to the 1700s but uh that's neither here nor there the uh it came over to america around the turn of the century and uh the main kind of thought form was the uh, the belief in uh, the duality of matter and spirit, that this is uh, what we generally see and interact with uh, on the day-to-day -day basis is the material world that's all matter-based. And then there is the separate spiritual uh, world, and that's where things like souls and uh, immaterial uh, things would reside. Um, and so when uh that movement has led into a few uh, a few different directions and it was also influenced by a couple other things that were happening uh in the 17th and 18th century that i won't go into because then that's going to go on a whole different tangent i was gonna say i'm direction. learning a lot i kind of wanted you to go on those tangents a little bit i don't know um yeah, and so we'll the, wait until we've actually been able to sit down and do some research and like write an outline for you because I would love to scare the shit out. <laughs> I was of you. gonna say I don't I don't think I don't think Will needs to do research. He's he seems pretty knowledgeable on all this. Yeah, this is all off uh, off the noggin. I wouldn't call myself a spiritualist, but I'm I'm very into this shit. If you couldn't tell, um, what you no? What are you talking about? Yeah, I know, very <laughs> very bizarre. Um, I have some very strange beliefs. Um, but I'd like to hear them. You are a yeah. delightful person, so your beliefs would be delightful and bizarre in a good way by proxy. Yeah, but the um, essentially uh, what the Fox sisters uh, were doing with their shows, uh, and I believe they were like they were frauds, uh, if I recall. They were, I think it's Houdini actually. Um, out like he of exposed them, if them I remember. as interesting. I don't remember he was, exactly. Houdini was actually, actually one of those like up. very intense skeptics mm -hmm. uh, in in a in a big way. From uh, if if I remember correctly, yeah. like his his style of performance was like, look at these amazing things I've learned how to do, and if someone's saying it's supernatural, they're probably full of shit. Was that kind of his thing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Basically, interesting. interesting. Um, but yeah, so you had, um, the Fox sisters were one example. I was trying to think of another example of somebody, but it doesn't matter, uh, who has partaken in these type of, of things. Basically, this was like a big thing for, um, 
uh, a lot of people in the Americas, particularly the uh, upper middle class and wealthy, uh, enjoyed partaking in spiritualism. Uh, and it was a pretty widespread thing. And then, is that, is that why you still kind of see pockets of that in like Mason lodges and things like that? Kind of those Ivy League college things, or am I knocking on a whole different tangent there? Oh no, no, you're, no. That's it's it's you're very exactly well right. Made. Yeah, you're yeah, exactly right. The the like being able to dabble in the occult has been very much a pastime of the um uh, of of the wealthy for a very long time, mm -hmm. and there's a reason that it's associated with. Um, I mean, things that end up becoming conspiracy in a big way. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so like you're, you're actually like you're, you're, you're really you're, 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 you're touching tips in a big way here with, uh, with some, mm -hmm. with some spirits. Interesting. Much well, like I'm sure Will has. <laughs> no, that was good. I'm, I, I'm, I'm kidding. Yeah, I, I'm good. kidding. You, you're, you're both, you're both far too straight for that. <laughs> but I, one thing I do want to kind of tangent from there though that I'm curious about is that. I as you're saying this, I'm seeing the connection to like these ideas of um kind of sort of exploring the occult and spirituality in like elite rich circles, but like I'm curious what the reasoning is behind that, like psychologically, because like I'm a pretty skeptical guy. I don't really believe in anything supernatural outside of science. And so I can see mm -hmm. though why these supernatural ideas are like the idea of communing with you know, deceased loved ones and stuff can provide hope to people who are lacking it. And I think that so much insecurity gets thrust on those who aren't wealthy that spirituality mm -hmm. and things like that can really draw people in by giving them hope and giving them focus for a world that is unkind to them. So I'm curious why wealthy people would engage in stuff like that. Um, I'm surprised they're have enough time to take off oppressing the lower class to indulge in such things. I'm, I'm just curious for like the reasoning behind that kind of connection. Uh, Chris, I think a, a, a large part of it is just prestige. Like you have some okay. money to throw around and this is what all it, it's like keeping up with the Joneses. Like okay. this is the big fad right now. So I want to go uh, to like, go throw a party and invite like Madame Blavatsky or have somebody like Aleister Crowley there. And like, it would be outrageous and everybody's going to be talking about this okay. or we want to bring in some, um, have this big seance and it's a big to do that everybody is going to remember for the next like 12 months. Right. There's a lot of like parlor stuff. Okay. Like that was the thing. Like this was something to talk about at parties in a big way. Um, this was also something that people took like very seriously in a lot of different levels. And yeah, mm -hmm. some of it was like, hey, I, you know, basically I brought in a celebrity. I brought in the wickedest man in the world or something to that effect. Um, yeah. And a lot of people just like came to, uh, you know, uh, uh, figure things out. Like there's there's a there's a lot of different. Um, you know, if you had the if if you have the money, the fuck you money essentially to dabble in mysteries that are beyond the pale for somebody who can't really afford to like think about them, you know, that you might sense. as well kind of fuck with them. Mm -hmm. So, and and a lot of okay. people did. That yeah. makes sense. That is really cool insight. Thank you both. That's awesome. Yeah, and then when you get down to it, um, with the well, what we call Ouija board, it's a type of uh, spirit board or talking board. Um, and much like tarot cards or uh, dowsing or a, a few different methods, this is what a... What is a dowsing? A, I've just I've never heard of that. I'm curious. Uh, generally, you would use a, a copper rods or a... Uh, a y-shaped stick or some people would use a pendulum to um with regard to spiritualism uh this would be using it to to tap into the spirit as a way to interact with that side um, almost like a tuning of some kind right so okay. with tarot cards they would or so with that with dowsing, it's generally used to find um, oil or water. Um, 
in fact, uh, there have been uh, different actual water companies that have hired uh, dowsers to try to find leaks. Um, Interesting. E even fairly recently, there have been stories on this, and then the water companies will deny uh, deny that they would ever do something like that. Um, but th this uh, these have been practices. Uh, dowsing itself has been a practice for I think two thousand years. Oh wow! Um, and sp spiritualism is just would be one theory on how that something like that would work. Um. That was a weird way to to phrase that sentence, but I think I got my my point. Made sense uh, to me. My my point came across. Um, but yeah, with like tarot cards, um, you'd be you're using that to uh basically read the um what I would refer to as the background tapestry to of 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 how uh how things are are occurring basically and uh, as oh. a means of trying to to uh get information from that uh from the the spirit side of things as opposed to the matter side of things um so it's the spiritual equivalent of the of cosmic microwave background basic that that's a, a interesting way to put it um kind of kind of Kind of not really if you don't think about it. Okay. Uh, that that applies to a lot of my insights. Kind of sort of <laughs> if you don't think about it. <laughs> what Carrie, what would you say about Stanley? I say it's tapping it, it's it's uh it would be like uh, it, it's it, like Deadpool is would is like the exam it would be the good example of a medium. All right. Okay. Deadpool is breaking the fourth wall by basically saying act of saying directly what the writers actually want to say want him to say. You know, uh, in in a way that's like talking directly to the reader, whereas yeah. for the most part, the rest of the characters have to just ignore, uh, or or like or like are not aware that they are in a comic book. Right. Um, thinking of spirits is kind of the same way. Like the Ouija board is the comic book panel, or or a tarot, or 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 a or a pendulum, which pendulums can actually be used on talking boards too. Um, it's all supposed to be a channel for the various spirits to be able to communicate to you whether or not they know about anything about your question or you know any information they want to pass on that is a much better way of of saying what i was trying to get across well you said tapestry and i started thinking about it so you know deadpool mm -hmm. yeah this is very informative i'm loving this and so yeah, so th those became like that sort of thing became popular, and then the the Ouija board came across because there was one specific person who designed the specific design for the Ouija board that we all know and love, um, with the full alphabet, uh, the numbers zero through nine, uh, yes, no, and goodbye, and then. Uh -huh. Saying Ouija at the top, which interesting. And it has you told what's the little like marker you move around? What's that called? Uh, the planchette. Yes, I had never heard that term. Yeah. So who, if, who, if, uh... who was the creator of that? Ah, uh, Milton Hasbro. Name? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, it, it was it was Parker Brothers. Um, was the uh, let's see. No, it was before they got sold to Park. Parker Brothers bought the. Um, uh, bought it from um. I forgot. Oh, I've, I've just I just remembered. Hang on, I've I've I'm having a I'm having a reading. It's um, <laughs> it was. What are the spirits saying, its, Carrie? Uh, following its commercial patent by businessman Elijah Bond on the first of July, ah. eighteen ninety. Citation needed. Um, <laughs> the Ouija board was regarded as an innocent parlor game, unrelated to the occult, until American spiritualist. Pearl Curran popularized it by using it as a tool during World War One. Wow! Wow! Uh, wow! Curious, what an amazing what? connection to the spirit world. I'm, yeah. I'm not. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm. I'm sorry. I, I maybe. I, I can. I can see the glow of one, spirituality but... all over your face. I know it. It is it, like very, very <laughs> cinematically. It lit, it lit up perfectly. But right. um. But yeah. So it was. It was owned by a businessman who had a patent on it. Mm -hmm. Um. You so know, a couple and... different stories uh, about it. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Will. 
Oh, interesting story. The uh, the patent office uh, was going to refuse to uh, give him a patent on that design, uh, the design of the Ouija board, um, until uh, they actually uh, took it to uh, the patent officer and for a demonstration, and he asked that it spell out his name, and it did. But and it's this, it's a person operating it, right? Uh, yes, a person who was speaking with the uh, um, patent officer who may have already known his name, but right. Was, so that doesn't seem like that impressive of a demonstration. It was impressive to the patent officer. Well, there you go. And there's actually, um, to my knowledge, there's at least a a couple stories of how it got its name. Um, I'd love to hear those because you mentioned something about it being uh, almost a uh, a Creole type amalgamation of different words from different European languages. Yeah, so we oui and ja, um, meaning yes in French and German. Right. And then the other story is that um, the spiritualist who um, Elijah Bond was working with uh ask the board what its name should be and it's and that's what it spelled out oh i see cuz it now and, again my only knowledge is from movie adaptations of this but would is the person operating the planchette supposed to not be looking at the board so is it estimated to some degree if they're uh if they're not talking to spirits and trying to spell something out themselves or is it randomized to a certain extent like so well, that's you the can... thing the, there's mm -hmm. a lot of rules about it like okay. uh, apparently what you're supposed to do it's kind of like um if you've seen the trailer for the new tarot movie I have not. they make a big deal about the rule that you're never supposed to do a reading with somebody else's tarot deck okay. um there's a lot of there's a lot of very similar things when it comes to a um uh, to talking boards in general like for for the most part talking boards are a board a planchette and and a lot of times that planchette will have a lens in it like a, like a, like glass plastic whatever it is oh okay. um mm -hmm. if you talk to your if you talk to somebody who is deep in spiritualism they actually believe that those three things should be kept separate the lens should be oh. taken out of the planchette the planchette should be kept away from the board um because like if they are together it's like leaving uh it's like leaving a, an old school phone off the hook right. like you're like it, it's just kind of the whatever, connection is whatever. open mm -hmm. the connection's open exactly um but there's all these sorts of ways that you're like you can read it like somebody can read individually and they can do it like kind of within the within a trance the most common way which is kind of like where the where the the seance thing comes in handy is basically everybody at the table has a hand on the planchette okay. and you you are all you're all supposed to relax and just let the planchette move as it needs to hmm. using all of your like passive psychic energy as a conduit interesting mm -hmm. yeah and there's there is some interesting science on how uh how that might actually work um, to tell so um, there's some suspicion and a couple of studies that that think that this could be just um, micro muscle twitches oh, that yeah. cause the uh, the movement of the planchette and thus your uh, subconscious mind is basically controlling it. Well, and that actually that made because I was about to be like, there's no science here, but you make an interesting point that like I think. Even, you know, cultures that are before modern science or people who didn't have access to modern science, they could probably tell when they're designing these talking boards if people have certain movement propensities when they have certain emotions or feelings. That could absolutely, if you're having subconscious emotions, translate to micro muscles. Like, I think science currently is really cutting edge with the connection between the brain and the body. I don't think they're as distinct as we've thought in the past. And so, yeah, if someone's anxious, they could be more jumpy with those micro muscles. Or if they're feeling more content, maybe they're drawing inwards. I, I could see how there could be some mm -hmm. concrete science contributing to that. 
It's fascinating. And, and while I agree with, and while I do kind of agree with Josh on some levels, um, he's entirely fucking wrong. Um, <laughs> because it's it's demons. It is always demons. Oh, God. It's um, always demons. Or, or, or malevolent em- entities. Or if I may use a word. Are they that all is, malevolent? Is, what if some of the demons are nice? Um, uh, well, then, then it's just a psychic infestation, to use a term from the absolutely brilliant Late Night with the Devil. Um, I would. If, I wish I liked horror movies more, so I would watch that because I you watched. Should David, watch that. No, period. Just yeah. it's really good. But is it scary? I went and watched it. A, <laughs> I went and watched it a second time with a couple of friends uh, just the other night. I and, love David uh, Dustmalchin, so that that was a big selling point for me. David Dustmalchin is amazing in it. Everything about the movie is amazing, but also if you go back and watch it a second time and you see the things that you might have seen out of the corner of your eye the first time. And you know what you're looking for? It is chillingly good. Oh, I need so. to go back and watch it again. I, I get nervous about watching horror movies because I feel like it's if it's not good, I'm just watching a not good movie. But if it is good, then I'm gonna be scared. Seems like a lose lose a lot of the time. It's I, it's I like to invest mentally in movies I'm watching. It helps with my suspension of disbelief. Mm-hmm. So when it's a scary movie, I'm like Okay, now I'm scared. I don't. I don't like to feel fear. I think <laughs> it's the good kind of horror. There's not much in the way of jump scares. It's horror in that it it is gonna make you uncomfortable at points yeah. to watch, yeah. but it's not just targeting off of uh, I'm gonna continually startle you and yeah. uh, to be uh, to make you uncomfortable. It's I'm going to deal with ideas and topics that uh, people might not be prepared to deal with on a regular, uh, on a daily basis. And I'm uh, going to reframe the in, your entire reality through this. Uh, it's not even that long. It's like an hour and a half long really? movie. I like the premise because I, I saw a podcast... Um with David Dasmalchen talking about the movie and the premise and their approach to doing it sounded really cool. Mm-hmm. But I was also like, I don't want to get scared. So <laughs> it's legitimately fantastic in that way, especially if you like, mm-hmm. whether well, you know anything about the occult, if you don't know anything about the occult, like if you actually want something that's a pretty decent representation of where satanic panic stuff was in the mid seventies, mm-hmm pretty good like you could look at most of the references in that movie yeah and find the real equivalent of it and not be disappointed Mm -hmm. i will have to watch it during the daytime then but i think ironically i I, I got a lot of satanic panic stuff when i was a kid like i wasn't Mm -hmm. allowed to play with pokemon cards because they had evolution shit like that and so I caught Which... like the late '90s holdovers from the '80s Satanic Panic. Um, mm-hmm. So now, as an adult, that kind of stuff doesn't scare me because I don't believe in it. So it's like all hypothetical. Mm-hmm. But if it's done well, to where it's like in this world, this could happen, and if it did, how horrifying would it be? I'm like, well, now I'm scared. Thanks. And why do you actually, have to be so good at I, filmmaking? Get out of here! I think we've <laughs> come full circle to why you didn't know about the Ouija boards being. Uh, owned by Hasbro because literally the satanic panic um and more specifically the book the uh that came out the exorcist that was based around an actual um possession um that was uh recorded through unofficial journals um and what basically got reported is that the the little boy who was uh became Reagan in the movie um was playing with a uh with a spirit board and then became possessed verse uh and that narrative kind of took a dark turn for uh spirit boards in general as being this like evil thing and then, of course, the satanic panic where everything got pushed back, uh, like anything vaguely dealing with spiritualism or the occult got demonized uh, by the fervor. 
Yeah. Well, and it's interesting now because oh, yeah. I, I, I look at, uh, you know, Christianity as being just another facet of supernatural fascination. So it's weird to see them attacking every other type of supernatural ideas except their own. It, it, it lends to the insularness of saying, mm -hmm. okay, this is a made up thing that needs to attack everything else that doesn't exactly correlate with it because it's propped up on so much delusion and indoctrination and group fantasy that I don't know, but mm -hmm. I don't want to spend well, too yeah, much but, time yeah. talking on this because we got stuff to do tonight, but um, this well, has yeah, been a fascinating really, discussion. He brought, and he brought Gonch. So um, like, <laughs> I, I, I think we're good. Like Satan created metal and, uh, and you know, thank you Christianity for that. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> without God, there'd be no Satan. And without Satan, no metal. Thank you, Satan. That's, without Satan, there'd be no Ozzy Thanks, Osbourne. Satan. I Thanks, mean, the Satan. science is pretty sound on this. I, don't, I, don't, I think we're pretty concrete there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, this has been a super fun discussion. I'm glad we talked a lot. I have some new list of movies to add to my list now. Um, this was very fun. Thank you. Thank you both for joining. This was a great time. And looking forward to doing more Absolutely. of them soon. Yeah. Maybe yeah, we could even do a podcast is... where you both watch me watch the 90s live action Mario Brothers movie. Uh, See my sure reactions. That. And I'll only take a little bit of LSD beforehand. <laughs> Microdosing. Microdosing. My... <laughs> yes. It, it'll, it'll make the plot make more sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Carrie. Thank you, Will. This has been an awesome episode of yeah, episode of Tangents and Nerds. I mean, Nerds and Friends. Uh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm.